there is there is a very intense uh, investment competition emerging between uh, states now and uh, it it is sometimes becoming uh, very uh, extremely competitive and to some extent self destructive so where does the uh, healthy competition end and self destruction start when it comes to uh, wooing businesses dr reddy so i think right now there is adequate scope for growth in all areas and there is thankfully enough global capital and enough capital looking to come into india so we haven't reached that point uh, every state is coming up with their industrial policy with a strategy to really uh, attract i think there's a great uh, potential in sitting together and choosing areas and minimizing overlap for example telangana did something very smart in that they built on us their strengths which is the pharmaceutical and are now doing a much larger pharmaceutical park they looked for new emerging areas so it is kind of everybody needs to do it but they also found it enabled specializations and then did a very significant thing in defense so if each one could find their specialized clusters minimize the extent of extreme competition and also figure out where to draw the line on this one but for now i think that's uh, right now it's about scope and scale and winning the kind of global opportunities that we have so uh, the the point of what you are making right now of disruptive competition is probably a few years away okay so shashai would you agree uh broadly yes but i think uh, the most important thing about making promises of uh, concessions tax concessions to attract investment yes. is to make promises that you can keep one of the big problems and i'm not specifying a state for that one of the big problems is that uh, the promise concessions are not made available that mm -hmm. i think is is pretty bad mm -hmm. therefore there is a affordability check that is critical and therefore the state has to be responsible for the promises they make in terms of the concessions that's number one number two is theoretically i mean you don't uh, make uh, uh, concessions available beyond what you believe is the right cost of creating a job at the end of it it's about direct and indirect jobs and therefore i'm not sure that there is a template that uh, state governments uh, use for the purpose of assessing what's the cost of uh, the grant that, is, that that goes to create a job i think it's important to have uh, some kind of a national benchmarks on this and subject the concessions to that benchmark to see whether it is really making sense uh, at the at the ground level to create jobs and a quick line i think all of us in india should realize that our competition is not internal right. it's bangladesh where textile is rocking it's taiwan where Uh, you know the the entire electronic industry yeah. it's uh, bangkok imagine that thailand is doing more on furniture than india yeah. so let's figure out where our true competition is and ensure that we as a country compete collaboratively right mr santana yeah so i'll speak from a microeconomic point of view i'm not going to speak for the state so i think uh, both sangeeta and shesh are eminently qualified for that from a firm point of view i love this competitive competitiveness amongst the state i think all of us when we go for our firm we want the best possible thing and i believe that the states have figured this out i think there is a shift in the past states used to give away the future revenues a future tax i think states have shifted to a, a a very classical model of an investment subsidy today anywhere in the world you go there is a classical investment subsidy whether it's in new york or whether it's in uh, hungary whether it's in france whether it's in germany whether it's in vietnam there is an investment related subsidy which is always provided that's a better model because you are very clear about the investment whereas you don't know how long what is the multiplying factor for the revenues so i'm for intensely states competing amongst themselves and they will figure this out over a period of time they will they have enough avenues for them to talk to each other and figure out uh, what they're doing is leading to uh, you know a, a downward path or not but i think for the uh, uh, probably for a few year if not a decade we should let that play because if we want free market why can't we allow the states to have a free market on attracting the firms within the 
uh, overall uh, boundaries. And so that's, that's really my view, but my view is a uh, firm's eye view and not necessarily a view okay. from the state. Okay, Mr. Kamath. 